Hey, welcome to Stan Energy Man. Welcome to my show. Uh, we got a special show today that I'm trying to make as confusing as humanly possible for all of you watching. But it's focused on the teachers, the teachers out there that want to teach hydrogen safety and hydrogen technology to their students um, from intermediate all the way through high school. So what I've done is I've brought in some equipment that we used during the um, World Conservation Congress this past Sunday to show the audiences there um, the technology that's available nowadays using hydrogen. And you might say, well, you know, what, what is hydrogen compared to any other fuel? Well, hydrogen is really an energy carrier um, more than a fuel. <clears throat> so what we do is we try to emphasize that you can use hydrogen for storing energy. And in certain, in certain circumstances, like you need a lot of power for a long time, hydrogen is actually one of the more efficient ways to store energy as opposed to a battery so uh, for comparison. Because batteries on a large scale or for a long duration like days or weeks, they're super expensive. So what I've got with me today is a, a little kit that's available online that you can buy from, uh, from um, the hydrogen fuel cell or the fuel cell store. And there's a, they've got a whole bunch of different ones, but we, we picked two of them. This, this kit here is kind of nice because it shows you how you can take renewable wind power this is actually meant to go outside and the wind, when the wind blows it, it generates electricity, just like the big wind turbines out at uh, Hawaiian Electric. And then PV uh, photovoltaics, just like the, on the roof of your house, little photovoltaic cell. Instead of using that today, I'm using a little battery pack and cheating because I don't have any sunlight in here and I don't have any wind. So we won't be using these today, but we will be making some hydrogen using electricity and water. And so, all this stuff is in this kit, along with a couple extra blades. So if you really want to teach wind power, it, these blades rotate and change pitch. Um, and they also have three different style blades in there. So you can experiment with different pitches and different blade shapes to, to, to show the students how the, the wind uh, velocity and stuff changes, uh, how much electricity you produce. Um, it has a little electrolyzer kit. That's what this is. It's a PEM electrolyzer, a propa, propane, excuse me, proton membrane, exchange membrane electrolyzer, PEM, and then a small fuel cell. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to take some water. We're going to put water in these two containers, distilled water, just plain water. Um, and we're going to make some electricity or some, make some hydrogen by splitting the water into hydrogen and oxygen. Then we're going to take the hydrogen and we're going to feed it into this fuel cell over here. And I'm going to show you how it'll take air that comes in through this little part here and the hydrogen and makes electricity and will actually run that propeller. So what we'll do first is I've got some distilled water here from our local um, Safeway store or wherever grocery store you want to go to. We'll fill these up about halfway. There's actually graduated marks on the, on the containers there so the, the teacher can, can look and fill it exactly where it needs to be. I'm going to end up probably injecting a little bit more. There's two little notches on the bottom here and I'm going to try and push this in, in here and um, I'm going to release this so that it actually lets the lets it fill up with water because that's what you want it to do. You want it to actually fill with water and not um, and not sit there and have a big air pocket underneath but once it goes in there it actually locks into the bottom and likewise this one we'll pull this off so that it can actually fill up inside here there we go I'm gonna make it sit in there tight too so it doesn't bounce around there we go and we'll put it in here and I'll explain to you how all this stuff is hooked up. The instructions are pretty good, but I'm going to, I'm going to kind of emphasize some really important points. The first important point is whenever you're working with the DC power, and this is all direct current DC power, red is always your positive, black is always your negative. Red is also the side that the oxygen is going to come out and black is the side that the hydrogen is going to come out. So when you look on these cylinders in your kit, you'll see that all the lettering on this one is red for oxygen and all the lettering on this one is black 
and it helps you when you're wiring everything up. The teacher won't be confused because all the places you plug the black wire into are black and all the places you plug the red wire into are red. So what we're going to do here is we've got this, um, this is, all this thing does here is shuts off the hydrogen so it won't leak out after I've made it. But we'll turn on some electricity and what you'll see is you'll see bubbles, if you can see this through the, the camera, you'll see the bubbles start to moving, start moving through the line there. We're actually making hydrogen and oxygen. And as, this, as these things work, it'll take maybe three minutes for this thing to fill up, but you'll see approximately twice as much hydrogen being made as oxygen. And why is that? Well, you've got H2O, so you've got two hydrogen atoms for every oxygen atom in a, in a molecule of water. So for every, when you start to break it apart, you'll see more hydrogen than you will see oxygen initially. So all I've done here is there's two um, AA batteries in here, and it's set up to, to run like that. And you use this in place of the photovoltaics or the wind power. But if you did this experiment outside, you could just as easily take the PV array instead of the battery or the windmill instead of the battery to generate the electricity you need to split the water into hydrogen and oxygen. So after a couple minutes, we'll have a nice stock of hydrogen and, and we'll have some oxygen in there. And what I'll do is I'll shut the hydrogen off. I'll cap it off so it doesn't leak out and I'll connect it to this piece over here. This is actually a fuel cell, just like what's in the Toyota Mirai or, or any other vehicle that we build with uh, down at HCAT for the Air Force. And what it does is it takes the hydrogen and it takes the oxygen from the air and turns it back into electricity. So as soon as the hydrogen and the oxygen start hitting this fuel cell membrane, it'll turn it back into electricity. And so what we'll do is we'll use this to run first the propeller, and I'll, I'll show it running the propeller, and then we'll plug it into these lights and, and show you that it'll, it'll run lights, it'll run motors, it can be used for anything. So in a car, in our cars, our vehicles, we use this fuel cell, but it's much bigger, of course. It's a 30 kilowatt fuel cell in the vehicles, and it can actually drive a really powerful motor. And that's why Toyota in, in their cars and Hyundai and all the folks doing fuel cells, Honda, they've, they've refined this technology to, to a point where they can, they can do a high performance car using hydrogen. And um, people ask, okay, what about the safety of hydrogen, Stan? You know, we, you hear about the Hindenburg, you hear about eight atom bombs or hydrogen bombs and stuff. And you say, you know, is it really safe? Well, you'll notice that when we're making the hydrogen, we keep these two gases separated in these containers. We have oxygen separated from the hydrogen, and that's for a reason. As long as you have pure hydrogen in the hydrogen container, it's not going to be flammable. It doesn't burn, it doesn't explode, it doesn't ignite. So as soon as you put an oxidizer with the hydrogen in the right proportions, and the proportions are pretty broad, anywhere from 4 to about 74% by, by um, volume, you can actually have a highly flammable mixture. So a lot of times you're on the internet and you see people making hydrogen with, with uh, metals and acids, and what they're really doing is they're making both gases at the same time and mixing them, and that is very dangerous. You don't want to do that. You want to keep the gases separate. So as you notice on the hydrogen side, now we're getting quite a bit of hydrogen built up in here. You can see that bubble's kind of extending down further and further, and the oxygen side, the bubble's are still a little bit high. It's up here. So we'll let this go for another couple minutes and, and see how much hydrogen we can produce. When we were at the convention center, we actually had it pretty much down, down here near the base. And uh, it, it ran both of these uh, units for a pretty good amount of time. But um, for, for you teachers, this is actually a great way to show students what they could do at their home uh, in terms of powering their own house. Because in your house, you could have a small wind turbine or several wind turbines around your house. There's different styles. They have some wind turbines that go along the ridge of your house with the wind blowing and will uh, produce electricity that way instead of having a big propeller spinning around. And then, of course, people are really familiar with the photovoltaic cells. And there's different kinds of photovoltaic cells. This is a monocrystalline photovoltaic cell. And it, it's about 17 to 20 percent efficient. It's, it's pretty efficient. It's one of the more efficient cells that you can buy. And, um, and we probably could do a show on, on just how a photovoltaic cell works. But actually, what, what's interesting is if you, if you get the reading material that comes with these kits and go through it, it'll actually tell you how a PV cell works how the wind turbine generation works. So you can actually use this to teach your students not just about the hydrogen and, and the electrolyzer and the fuel cell, but how we actually can make electricity using sunlight. So, you know, we got a 
pretty good amount of hydrogen built in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my power on my little battery pack here. And I'm going to shut off my hydrogen. I'm going to disconnect the hydrogen from the electrolyzer. And I'm going to come over here to my fuel cell. And I have a little place to connect my hydrogen to my fuel cell. Now, normally, this thing would just start running right away. But I've only got hydrogen going in one side. But if I let some air in, it should, oops, but oh, I gotta loose this first. It should actually start, there you go, making electricity. So what we have now is a pure hydrogen coming out of the hydrogen tank, going into the negative side, the black wire side of my fuel cell. And I have oxygen coming in through this little vent here, through just the air, air from the oxygen, or oxygen from the air, that's creating an electric charge as the hydrogen and air turn the hydrogen and oxygen and air back into water. So we, it ran out of oxygen, so I let a little bit more in, and it starts running again. And so as long as you are using uh, mi the, a mix of oxygen with the hydrogen, you can produce electricity. So before I run completely out, we can also take this and show you, you could even do lighting. You can, you can put lights into your house and run lights off of it, not just motors, but you can also make electricity for your house uh, using stored hydrogen uh, and a little fuel cell. So for example, if you had a lot of PV on your roof and all day long you didn't, you didn't need all the electricity from your PV, they'd call that curtailed power if it was on the grid. But if you had a lot of uh, electricity being made that you weren't using, you could have a little electrolyzer like this at home that would store hydrogen in some low pressure containers, maybe 150 to 200 pounds per square inch containers, and just store it up. And then at night when you came home, you could take your, your Toyota Mirai or your Honda Clarity or your, your, um, your Hyundai SUV with its fuel cell in there and run your hydrogen that you collected all day long into your car start filling the car up with hydrogen and also giving power back to your house at night using the hydrogen that you made all day long. And that way you would be using your electricity that you're generating from your PV and your wind power, um, not only to power your house, but to fill up your car. So all night long you could have a, a small compressor, small volume, high pressure compressor, putting hydrogen back into your car all night long and charging it up. So the next day you'd have hydrogen in your car and all night long you had hydrogen running into your house, the electricity in your house. And you can see we're, we're just making little tiny bubbles of hydrogen basically, but if you use LED lights, you know, low, uh, low draw lights and motors, you can actually get quite a bit of performance out of even a small amount of hydrogen. So as the technology gets better and more efficient, you just get better and better products that are more efficient and you know, you can do more and more at home and, and be more and more versatile. The other piece too is, like I say, using LEDs and being efficient at home and, and trying to save as much energy as you can is the first step you, you make. Just ask my friend Ray Starling, he'll tell you, you always go for the efficiencies first. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna take a quick break here and um, I'm gonna set up for another kit that, that we got about the same time. We didn't get to demonstrate it at the convention center but it's, uh, it's got a more advanced technology this, than this. Instead of using the two different devices Hi, to generate electricity. Hi, and thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii. Um, My name is Justine Espiritu, and I host the Hawaii Food and Farmer Series with my really co-host cool. Matthew it's, it's Johnson really really cool. It's a new version of a fuel cell Every called a reversible fuel cell. Every week we bring on farmers as it well actually as all the other individuals. The hydrogen, and then it can take the hydrogen and make it back into electricity. So we're going to take a quick short break here, and I'll be back in about, about a minute and uh, we'll have the other, other kit set up for you. Hi, and thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Justine Espiritu, and I host the Hawaii Food and Farmer series with my co-host Matthew Johnson of Oahu Fresh. Every week we bring on farmers as well as all the other individuals and organizations that help support a thriving sustainable food system. In fact, it's interesting to learn what others are doing so you don't have to be a Hawaii resident or producing food on Hawaii to be featured on the show. Like today's guest, Wyatt Bryson of Jewels of the Forest and Microlab Solutions. Aloha, thank you. It's been a pleasure being on the show. Um, I love uh, seeing what you guys do and I really support your mission. And uh, it's really nice being back in Hawaii 
and uh, thank you again. It's an honor. So you can see guests like Wyatt every Thursday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We are uh, here live on Mondays at 3 p.m. and we bring guests like our best health coach, Elena Maganto. Uh, eat well and follow her tips. Viva la comida saludable. Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, the host of the Savvy Chick Show, which you can watch every Wednesday at 11 a.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. On the Savvy Chick Show, we are all about inspiring and empowering women and girls to be the best they can be by having amazing guests from all around the world. So we hope you'll join us every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to my lunch hour. Stan the Energy Man here with a special show for teachers that want to teach hydrogen to their students and a couple kits that are available online. Uh, the last one I had was kind of a general purpose um, renewable energy with PV and, uh, and um, also wind power that you can make uh, your hydrogen from that electricity, that DC current. Um, this kit that I've got out here now is really kind of slick. It's, um, the model is T107 Tutorial High Runner. What it is, is it's a, a scaled down basic version of a fuel cell car. But what's neat about this fuel cell car, even cooler than the cars, even cooler than the, the cars that are, that are out there right now in production, are the fact that this one, this fuel cell in here is reversible. So this is a reversible fuel cell. And again, just like in the other one, I'll, I'll turn it uh, this way so you can see. When you have your connection set up, you have an oxygen side that's red and a hydrogen side that's black. And what I've done is I've already filled up the, um, the hydrogen side with water. And I'm going to fill up the oxygen side over here, um, which is the hardest part is just filling this doggone thing up because I've got to connect that. And I've got this part disconnected so that as I fill it, um, it actually has to go in far enough to start running out of this side so I've got water all the way in the system until it comes out there it's popping out you can see it running out there I can it keeps some uh, once you got this thing full though it's actually got a vacuum for the most part it must have a leak in there and um, I keep some napkins around just in case so it doesn't leak too much It's got little caps on there to, to finish, fill it off. Um, I'm going to unplug these now because these are actually set up to run. And again, just like in the last sec segment, I have this battery pack here that I'm going to use. Another nice thing to do is whenever you have these battery packs, you don't want these things shorting out. They have a switch, an on-off switch, but as a backup, you don't want the positive and the negative hitting each other. So I put a little, a little um, cap on the positive side. And you always want to try and do that to the positive side because that's your hot side. So if you have any other shorts, if you, if you cap off the positive side, it's safer. Okay, so what I've got now is I've um, got power coming to my, my fuel cell. And what you'll see is you'll start to see water fill up in the top part of the container as the hydrogen starts to fill and the oxygen start to fill in and displace the water in the bottom part of the container. So... While it's doing its work, I'm going to clean up my water mess here that I spilled all over the place. But this is making the hydrogen, just like in the other kit, you have the hydrogen making, uh, being made by its own electrolyzer. In this kit, like I say, the electrolyzer is also your fuel cell. It also makes the electricity after the fact. So let me get this back in the middle here, put my paper towels away. So we've got hydrogen being made on this side, oxygen being made on that side, and we'll give it a little bit of time to, to do all that stuff. And then what you'll see is the magic in this fuel cell is as soon as I, as soon as I um, start plugging it around, um, it'll actually start, I can turn the car on and start driving it. All righty. So, so this kit, again, is available online at the fuel cell store, and they have lots of cool stuff on that site if you're a teacher. There's lots of things you can, you can do over there and, uh, and lots of, of different uh, models they have. You can actually run this one two different ways. You can either run it using the oxygen from the oxygen side or you can run it using air. Um, so uh, for those of you that, that, that aren't basically scientists, 
air is mostly nitrogen and about 15 to 20 percent oxygen depending on what altitude and where you're at um, and other minor gases co2 argon whatever else is, is hanging around in your vicinity but primarily it's nitrogen and oxygen but pure oxygen of course is highly flammable really dangerous to handle um, and those of you that don't know if you take pure oxygen and you have a, an oily rag or oil on your hands and you get near pure oxygen, you can actually have spontaneous combustion and start a fire with no match or anything, just with oxygen and oil. Okay, so we've given this thing a little bit of time here. I'm gonna turn the electricity off and I'm gonna unplug the, the power that I made the hydrogen with and through the magic of this, this reversible fuel cell, I'm gonna plug the, the uh, motor into the reversible fuel cell I'm going to lift the back end off the ground, but I'll, I'll let it go. This thing actually starts driving, and it'll go for quite a while um, off of the hydrogen that's in there. And what you'll see is, is if you look at the different water levels in here, you'll notice on the hydrogen side, the water level is pretty high, and the oxygen level is really low. Again, it's H2O. You got twice as many hydrogen atoms as you have oxygen atoms in a molecule of water. So you have about twice as much hydrogen as you do oxygen um, in your fuel cell. But so this thing will run for actually quite a bit of time. It'll probably run at least a good five minutes off of the hydrogen that we've made um, with a little bit of electricity. So if your teachers are really creative, you could actually take both of these kits and you could make your hydrogen on this kit with the same wind power uh, or solar or photovoltaic as you did from the other kit um, and teach the students not only um, the different technologies that are out there and how they can be used in, the, in a grid or in your house, but also a little bit of safety. And the, the biggest safety I, uh, issue I can, I can tell you on hydrogen is that you really, really, really have to um, make sure that you don't mix the hydrogen and the oxygen uh, in a container. That's probably the biggest, the biggest uh, safety factor involved with hydrogen. As long as it's pure hydrogen, it's relatively safe to handle. Follow the, the procedures that it has in your, in your kit that it'll tell you about. And uh, safe to use, safe to work with. Hydrogen is not toxic. Um, but if you were in a completely hydrogen environment, you'd, you'd suffocate because there's no oxygen. But it's not toxic to you. You could actually breathe hydrogen gas and it's not gonna hurt you. Um, the Greek, uh, the hi word hydrogen comes from Greek and it means uh, water maker. And it's because as we run this um, fuel cell in here and turn it into electricity, the byproduct is heat and water. And so in our, in our vehicles, the only thing coming out the exhaust pipe is water. So that's the beauty of this technology. And people say, so Stan, why should we use hydrogen instead of batteries or hydrogen? What's so good about it? And what I tell them is if, if we actually had hydrogen cars right now, and we were driving hydrogen vehicles all the time, and I explained to you what it would take to make a gasoline-powered vehicle and how efficient it was, you would just shake your head and go, why would we ever be using a gasoline-powered vehicle? They're, they're about half as efficient in, turn of, in terms of uh, the energy that they give you back for the energy you put in. Um, they're dirty, they have pollutants, they have carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and particulates that come out of the engines. Uh, nowadays, all the diesel uh, vehicles have to meet higher emission standards. Uh, like we had Dave Rolf on the show a couple of weeks ago, the new CAFE standards, the, the vehicle standards for, for uh, reduced pollutants are all kicking in. Uh, hydrogen fuel cell, all it kicks out of the tailpipe is water, pure water vapor. And if you start with photovoltaics and renewables, there is zero carbon, zero carbon in the whole process. So you're not going to be doing anything except making the climate better by keeping the carbon down to zero uh, and, and giving yourself all of the energy needs that, that you need filled, whether they be for transportation or at home when you're not making electricity at night with your PV, you can use the hydrogen to make some electricity for you at home. So these technologies are, are really amazing and people go, well, this is great, Stan. Um, why aren't we already doing it? And the reality is that there's been trillions and trillions of dollars invested in oil tankers and oil refineries and internal combustion engines. And we're not gonna see those things go away in a month or a year or two years. But what you will see is these technologies like hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, 
The technology is 100 years old. It's well understood. The safety factors are well understood. And the vehicles will start coming online. They've already started with Toyota and Hyundai and Honda. You'll start to see Mercedes, GM, and Ford bringing vehicles out by 2020. And we already have commercial off-the-shelf forklifts and, and material handling equipment. You'll see uh, buses. There's buses in California that are run off hydrogen right now. And that's the way we're heading. Um, and one of the great quotes that uh, actually came from a Middle Eastern sheik who, who ran a oil, uh, an oil economy for his country said, we're not going to, we, we didn't move out of the Stone Age because we ran out of stones. And we're not going to move out of the oil age because we ran out of oil. We need to actually get this technology developed and get it ready so that rather than running out of oil and figuring out what are we going to do now, we already have the technology in place. We have a replacement for oil when it starts getting scarce. And we take that oil and use it for things that we really need that, that petroleum for. And when it comes to energy, we have technologies like this that we use to make the energy that we need. So hydrogen's a great, a great, great energy source. Um, it's powerful. I mean, I can stop this thing, but you can see it's, it's got plenty of torque. It's got plenty of, plenty of get up and go. And um, we, we use it in the real vehicles and it works great. So um, I'm hoping that some of you teachers out there will, will start to get some of this, uh, this, this technology in your classroom. And um, this unit is kind of neat. When I first got it, I went, well, how do we keep all this stuff together and keep the water from tipping over? All of these pieces have little magnets on the bottom. So it actually sticks, sticks to the chassis by magnet. Um, and that gives you some idea of the versatility of, uh, of these uh, units too. The magnetism doesn't bother the electrolysis at all. And uh, you can be making hydrogen even with magnets around. And it's just water, electricity, giving you hydrogen and oxygen. It's so basic, it's so cool. And that's why we get fired up at HCAT about the hydrogen technology, because it is the future. And we've always heard hydrogen is the future, the fuel of the future, and always will be. But I hate to tell you this, guys that are pessimists, it's today. The vehicles are coming out. The technology is proven, and we're ready to rock and roll. So that's a little picture of what, what the teachers can do. Um, we're always available for Q&A at HCAT, where you can send them right in here to ThinkTech. Uh, maybe next week when I'm on, you can call in the, 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 the show here, 415-871-2474, uh, and uh, you can ask questions. You can, you can call in any time that I'm on, and, and we'll try and answer your questions. Um, Next week, I'm trying to get actually one of our great electrical engineers that's doing some great, great work for us out of the base to talk a little bit about how this kind of technology can help Hawaiian Electric solve their grid problems. And he's an electrical engineer that's got a, a whole lot of time on microgrids and on hydrogen technology. And he's going to help us uh, prove this at Hickam Air Force Base so that the Air Force can take advantage of these technologies in the future. So. That's about all I really have for today's show. And um, I'm looking forward to any questions that you have. Again, you can get these things online from uh, the fuel cell store. And uh, I encourage you to order them and, and bring them in if you're a teacher, especially if you have funds. I know you poor teachers end up buying a lot of this stuff out of your own pocket, and that's, that's too bad. I hope you're taking a tax break for it. Talk to your accountant and do that, because you should be able to. But uh, this technology is really cool in the classroom, really easy to work with. Um, if the instructions seem kind of confusing, the main thing to tell you again is, is black, keep the black wires on the same side with the black and black is hydrogen and keep the red wires with the red and the red is oxygen on your fuel cell and on your electrolyzer. And it's about that simple. So DC current's real easy to work with. It's really safe. And it's the main thing you do with uh, fuel cells in your house. You would actually take an inverter that would convert your DC power into AC power to run your vacuum cleaner and your microwave and your TV. But what you'll find is a lot of the current that you use at home is actually DC power anyway. You can have DC power lights that are really efficient, uh, fluorescent lights. You can have um, DC, your computers use DC power. Even though you plug them into an AC outlet, it's converting it to DC to charge your batteries. So you'll find that if you actually design the house to run off of DC, there's not too many things besides motors that you need the AC power for. So for this week, I'd like to thank you for being on Stan, with Stan the Energy Man, and we'll see you next week, uh, same time, my lunch hour, 12 o'clock, uh, on Aloha Friday. <laughs>